Hey, yo, yo what, what up, Bodega Podcast? You already know who it is. It's one half of the sexiest Puerto Rican studs on this planet, Ortiz, baby. And shout out to all the Bodega Podcast listeners. Ow. This is Agatha Carter, and you're watching the Urban Wrestling Network. Yo, this is the Lucha Thug, the one-man Lucha gang, El Rey Gordo himself, the King Fat Boy Papa Wesco, and y'all rocking with the Urban Wrestling Network. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Was really hood in your hood, or how does it go again? Was really hood in your neighborhood, or do you want to be my neighbor? Anyways, you know, Chef is the one who does all this stuff. Unfortunately, he had an emergency this morning. My my thoughts and prayers out with him that everything works out. But we're here. I am here. I'm excited because I am here with Sam Leterna, the one that they call the interview machine. She's everywhere. She's everywhere. Miss Leterna, how are you? This a fine, beautiful, crisp winter afternoon. I'm very well. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, thank you so much for allowing us to have you on. I appreciate that because I, I love you, all your stuff that you do. And I, I mean, I love your work. It's amazing you. how you go. It's amazing how you go from here to here, and you have all the interviews, all these wrestlers, all these independent people. I love it. First question, which I hate to ask, but my friend always asks, is how did you get yourself into the wonderful world of wrestling? Uh, I get that question a lot, and I'm okay with answering it. Uh, so I actually started in pro wrestling. Uh, as well as a fan, I've been watching since I was a kid. Uh, but when I was like 21, 22, I decided that I wanted to be a wrestler. So I started training uh, with Johnny Rods at Gleason's Gym, World of Unpredictable Wrestling in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, did that for about a year, wanted to expand my horizons, then went to Calgary, Alberta, Canada to train with Lance Storm. Oh, uh, that was a great experience. I met friends for life there. Um, had some cool people in the class uh, that I will not name drop. And uh, then after that, I uh, wound up moving back to the States, uh, doing indies in the Northeast, moving to the Midwest for a year uh, to try and get reps out there. Got uh, injured pretty badly uh, last year in June, uh, bad back injury. So I decided that it was my time to stop wrestling after like four years. Uh, just because, you know, you, sometimes you have to prioritize your health over uh, what your passions are. Stopped being involved in wrestling for like yeah, six months or so. Was kind of depressed over that. Didn't realize that it was the wrestling missing from my life or just pro wrestling, not me being in the ring. So in February, March, I decided, you know what, I can talk. It's always been my strong suit. Let's see where this goes. You know, you have connects in the industry from just working, you know, ar around for four years. So let's see what happens. So I reached out to the people I know for interviews and uh, Wrestle Tea began. And then Chikara, you know, came knocking and I started hosting for Chikara's Action Arcade until it stopped uh, running for obvious reasons. Uh, and then Chris Levin reached out to me to help him with Camp Leapfrog. And now we are co-writing and booking Camp Leapfrog, and I act as the host, and it's a project I'm really proud to be a part of. Uh, also proud of our roster, which is constantly growing. We have like 60 roster members now for Leapfrog, so yeah. Oh, and obviously working on IWTV, I forgot that. I, I, I also host for IWTV. <laughs> you, can't, you can't forget that one, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, you mentioned you stopped wrestling when you were 21, 22 around there? No, I started when I, around that age, and then I stopped in 2020. So, which means you started last year, because you look like you're still 21. So uh, I'm 26. Yeah, um, you still look 21. Yeah, so but uh, awesome. I was wrestling yeah, awesome. for four or five years before I stopped. Now, now you mentioned and and you said you went, you didn't want to name drop. We name drop here. Come on, girl, name drop. We, um, we love when you name drop. People. Okay, well, anyone who no, no, touches this who knows me will joke. know why. I mean, yeah. yeah, I don't like to name drop the person because he's my friend and I, I don't like to inflate egos. But uh, yeah. if you look at my graduating class and you want to dig, want to look at the graduation photo, you'll see some cool people in the class. Cool people. Yeah, we love name dropping here. We love name dropping. Boop, boop, drop, name the drops. <laughs> Come on, drop the names. 
But uh, you, you mentioned something important there, and you mentioned wrestle tea. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's something that's how did that one come up? How did that name or that little thing come up? Because every time when I see you do the recipe, you're always drinking something. It's like either yeah. some cognac or, or, or something in there and you know, drop a little bit of the, the bubbly that yeah. you have in the cup. Like how did the, the whole recipe thing come about? So uh, wrestle tea legitimately like came out of nowhere. Uh, the name itself, uh, at the time, I had been watching a lot of like Jeffree Star videos. Uh, he's, you know, the, the person that does all the makeup on YouTube. He's very entertaining. Uh, so I'd been watching a lot of that. He uses the word tea a lot to refer to like the scoop, drama. Um, a lot of my lovely, fabulous uh, male gay friends also use the word tea. So it's just something I kind of came up with in my head. And well, no, I appropriated it from uh, these lovely people and decided to do wrestling and tea. So the wrestle scoop, wrestle tea, perfect. You know, I just wanted it to be something that stood out and uh, didn't necessarily have, uh, you know, that connotation of like, oh, like, you know, ring, ring, etc. podcast. Like, I don't want to call anyone out on their name. I just didn't want it to be like a typical wrestling name, something uniquely feminine, I guess, like wrestle tea. And I also like drinking tea. I, uh, I drink a lot of green tea, a lot of matcha, and it's, it's good to stay hydrated on an interview. So it's always good to have something in hand. No cognac, not my thing, but uh, maybe during the holidays, I'll have some spiked eggnog in there. You'll have to, you'll have to maybe watch uh, Open Swim to find yeah, out. And, and, and you know, Coquito there inside the cup, now, myself, oh, I don't drink coquito. tea. Coquito, you know, for us Puerto Ricans, we all know what Coquito is. Oh, it's yeah. just the, 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 the Latino version of eggnog. Like, what is I eggnog anyway? Like, anybody <laughs> tell me, like, anyone, anyone tell me what an eggnog is? Because I have no clue. But Coquito, yes. Now, me, I don't drink tea. I'm more of a warm chocolate milk drinker. So I, I will probably that. put that in there and just kind of sip it with the pinky sticking up. You know, type of deal, but I mean, you've done a lot. Like, you know, like how many interviews have you already done under your belt? Like, do you have a number? Uh, this year I've done like 60 to 70 interviews. Wow, in like uh, from March until like today, yeah. Oh, wow, okay, yeah. Now, which has been your favorite interview? I'm pretty sure you can name drop that one. Like, okay. which one has been so far your favorite interview? Ooh, I've had a couple of favorites. I think that my number one is my interview with Max Caster, just because Max is so funny. He is such a good personality. Um, and he's always been like that. Like we used to work shows together in Long Island. He's always been just in your face, great at talking. And he just gave me a phenomenal interview and was really candid. Um, and I always appreciate that. Uh, he was an easy interview because he is such a performer uh, and he's so well spoken so that was a great interview um i'd say another one just because like we were at odds with our philosophies i guess me and richard holiday we did have an interview oh. i'm a tea drinker he's a coffee drinker so we had a little bit of a disagreement about that we still joke about that sometimes um but i do drink coffee occasionally you know that and uh then i'd say uh let's see just from a perspective of like educating myself and educating the audience that watches Wrestle Tea, I would say my interview with Danny Demento uh, from ICW No Holds Barred. I got a chance to like go to ICW No Holds Barred Volume Six, see the whole show, interview the guys for IWTV, and I'd never witnessed deathmatch wrestling in person. Uh, so that was a really cool experience, and I think that the interview that he gave really opened up that world. Uh, in a way that they don't usually allow people in for. So I'm really grateful for Danny for giving me that opportunity. Awesome. Yeah. Now, a question that I love to ask people is before the plague, which we call COVID-19, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you have plans already set up of how you wanted your year to go. And then COVID <laughs> hit and things changed for everyone. I, I wanted to know if you go into detail of what you have planned before COVID, how did it change? And did it change you for the better? Or did things just kind of got more messed up that you are picking Mm -hmm. up the pieces now? 
No, I think that uh, like 2020 in general was a blessing in disguise because uh, like my passion for wrestling and where I actually belong within the sphere of wrestling was, you know, decided for me by the universe um, and also by myself. I took a chance, you know, but um, when the whole pandemic lockdown happened in March, I had just started uh, interviewing people for WrestleT. I don't even think the first interview came out until like a week after lockdown. So I was just stressed about that because my plan was to go to live shows and get interviews in that way. In my opinion, the best interviews are live or rather in person and it's better to network in person anyway. People don't always want to do interviews when you contact them online, you know. Um, I'm sure you've seen this here and there. Oh, yes. So, so yeah, um, I just kind of had to like change and flip the script. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to mainly do Skype interviews. That's the platform that I use, just like you. Um, and I don't know, everything just kind of fell into place. It was really weird. Like as soon as WrestleT started, Mike Quackenbush reached out to me, uh, with an interest in using me as a segment host for Chikara. I didn't reach out to him. It just happened, you know, and I learned so much from Mike, regardless of whatever has happened with mm -hmm. Chikara. Um, we cannot take away that he is an, an incredible wrestling mind. Um, and he taught me so much in that time. Uh, and I just think that everything was a result of me just going with the flow. I like to control everything in my life, but I really just said, you know, if this is going to happen and it's meant to be, it'll be, and everything fell into place. WrestleT, Chikara, closing, Ch when Chikara closed, I thought it was the end of the world, pandemic in full swing. Uh, and I was like, oh, it's done. It's done. And then a couple of weeks later, Chris Levin hit me up for LeapFrog and I've never looked back since then, you know, then the owner of IWTV got to see what I was capable of doing at LeapFrog and I'm now employed at IWTV for their hosting. So everything happens for a reason. Um, I think with hard work and dedication, anything is possible. Um, for a really long time, I was kind of living in fear of the future with wrestling, with everything uh, career wise, just after not wrestling, uh, cause I do have a college degree and I could be pursuing things within that sphere of what I studied, but wrestling has always been my passion. So I'm hoping that 2021 continues to be, uh, the year of Sam Laterna cause I truly believe 2020 was that and we're just getting started. So yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Love it. Love it. Now, if your back injury didn't happen or slow you down. Yeah. Where do you think, Miss, the wrestler that turned out would be right now? I uh, I honestly don't know. I mean, it would be, you know, kind of ego driven of me to say that I would be somewhere now. I mean, who knows? Because wrestling in the year that I've stopped has changed so much. And there's so many opportunities for up and coming talent with AEW using so many independent wrestlers and signing uh, many of them. Um, so I think it's a great time for exposure. Uh, I, I don't know. At that time, I was just starting to get, uh, comfortable with myself in the ring. Um, like kind of not doubting every sing single thing I do. And I was also getting the opportunity to work with people that were like either like on my level or way above my level. And when you wrestle someone who is more experienced than you, it's always a learning experience. So I kind of like scratched the surface, then got injured and stopped, but you have to be realistic with yourself. And I really don't think that I was meant to be in the pro wrestling industry as a wrestler. Um, that's like a hard reality for some people, right? Um, and I definitely had that like reality set in, but now I'm so happy with where I'm at, uh, just, you know, paving the way broadcasting with IWTV, doing entry point uh, for them and just learning in this industry. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know, anything is possible. Uh, just not in the wrestling sphere. Would I maybe like yes. do something if the opportunity called for it? Yeah, but I think there's so many um, talented people who can better perform than I in the ring and are better suited for that. I'd rather tell their stories on WrestleT, on Entry Point, et cetera. So, yeah. Now, so far, 60 interviews done on your belt. Any one that you still have not interviewed that you definitely is the top of your cream, your I mean your number one on the list. Like who is that person that you yeah. want to interview in the front or, or or if it's more than one person, like who mm. do you want to interview in the in the future? 
I mean, there's so many people that I do want to interview in the future. Um, my whole thing is like on WrestleTea, I interview like indie wrestlers on the rise um, and also like some indie names, right? Um, but my focus hasn't been like larger than life stars like from AEW Dynamite, like signed to contracts or WWE uh, superstars. So I think that it would be cool in 2021 to start delving into that level of talent as well. Um, just to, you know, increase, uh, you know, my, my depth of interviews and types of people I'm interviewing, um, off the bat, like dream interview would be Randy Orton. Uh, he's been my favorite wrestler since I was a kid. Um, but from like a perspective of just like loving wrestling history, I would love, 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 and I'm hoping I get one. We'll see. I'm working on it, but, uh, I'd love to interview Kevin Von Erich. A uh, big, big fan of like old school wrestling, WCCW. Um, and I love what his sons are doing on Major League Wrestling as well. So even just getting to interview the three of them at once would be fantastic. But I'd love to just hear him tell his story. He seems like a really humble guy. Um, so that's like more in the immediate. And I don't know, there's a lot of women that I haven't gotten to interview that I'd like to interview as well. Um, sometimes it's harder to kind of like break those barriers with women as a woman in the entertainment sphere. So that's something I'm looking to, uh, get past and, you know, make moves with these lovely ladies that have so much to offer in the ring. And I'm sure that they have a lot to offer in terms of what they have to say on an interview. So, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm holding my fingers for that Kevin Barnabic interview. Cause that'd probably oh, yeah. be like a four, that'd be like a four part mini series with him <laughs> with just the history of alone. But I know you have a busy schedule today and stuff like that. But I was wondering, what can you give anybody, you know, females, males, especially females who want to get into the business of wrestling or what you're doing right now with taking your skills of, of yeah. the talk of Gab and putting them out there? Like, what will be your, your thing out there to give them? So um, just from a wrestling perspective, uh, I'm not going to speak in depth because I don't wrestle anymore, but you got to go to a good school. Uh, that's the most important thing. Create a pro in New York is great. Uh, if Beyond's wrestling school ever opens uh, post pandemic, I'm sure that will be a world class uh, place to train. Uh, just finding your people as well. Don't like be a lone wolf. Uh, be friendly, be genuine. Don't talk a whole lot of crap because that's just such a problem in wrestling. Um, be professional. This is a business. People who are professional rise above, you know, things that they don't like. Uh, and those are people that you see on television, right? So be professional. Um, and then as far as broadcasting goes, I would say uh, I've only been doing this since last March. I'm not even a year in, but focus on, you know, making yourself a brand, uh, putting content out that is content that your audience wants to see specifically. So in this case, a wrestling audience, right? Um, and then also just coming up with new ideas and ways to engage people that you're interviewing, because people don't want the same old questions every time. And people don't want their time wasted either. I'm not a big fan of, uh, you know, like 40 minute interviews, unless it's called for, or unless the person wants to speak for that long. So keep it short, keep it simple, they'll respect you more for it if you can get what you can get in in 15 to 20 minutes. Um, that's what I've noticed. And uh, yeah, always dress to impress. Anyone who knows me knows that I always show up to wrestling shows dressed to the nines because not because, you know, oh, an ego thing. I want to look good. Yeah, I want to look good because I want to be remembered because I want to get booked everywhere. So you should too. And practice your voice drills and all of that. You know, I do this weird thing where I, uh, I meow before my interviews. I meow because it helps, it helps like project your voice naturally that sound anyway so those are my pearls of wisdom and just believe in yourself uh and have the confidence that you can do this now i love your interviews because like you said you keep them nice and short and you always it's not the same questions every single time mm -hmm. you always change it up that's why i love watching your stuff now i know like i said you have a busy day like where can fans see sam yeah. that in the, in the future your shows please plug away I mean, if sure, you have any yeah. like like you know, like merchandise, like I I want is I want is somebody to turn that T-shirt. I already it's, have an eight by ten. I want a T-shirt. Well, I will tell you that the T-shirts are coming in twenty twenty one, for sure, hundred percent. 
Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Those uh, can always be ordered or any eight by tens uh, through a DM. Uh, I ain't fancy, uh, at least not yet. Uh, so just DM <laughs> me if you want some merch. But um, in terms of Twitter and Instagram, you can find me on both of those platforms at Sam Leterna, L-E-T-E-R-N-A, because not everyone speaks Spanish. And on Facebook, Recipe by Sam Leterna, if you want to follow the page. Uh, I don't really do private Facebook. Uh, and then I do have a Patreon account as well, Sam Laterna, same handle. Uh, and as far as Camp Leapfrog goes, uh, my passion project, I would follow them on Twitter and Instagram at Camp Leapfrog. We also have uh, the next big event that I will be a part of and hosting on Christmas Eve, uh, the 24th, this coming Thursday, Christmas Trios premieres on IWTV hosted by Camp Leapfrog or hosted by, yeah, hosted by Camp Leapfrog and High Tension Wrestling together. Um, it's going to be a fantastic trios tournament. It knocked my socks off when I saw it. Um, and I watch way too much wrestling, so I'm not equally impressed. And this was impressive. Um, also, before that, we're going to be having uh, an open swim show for Camp Leapfrog on Independent Wrestling's Facebook page. So you can find us there as well. It's going to be live. I'll be doing some fun interviewing. We have some matches that won't be featured on trios, but are fantastic as well. And uh, maybe some behind the scenes clips as well. So yeah, everyone watch Camp Leapfrog and all of our many shows that are happening on Christmas Eve, starting at 7 p.m. Uh, on Facebook and also on IWTV at 8 p.m. And one last thing, if you're not subscribed to IWTV, I don't know what you're doing, subscribe. You can use the uh, code LeapFrog for a free trial to IWTV. And through that, you have access to hundreds of thousands, okay, maybe tens of thousands of hours yeah. of independent wrestling from around the world. And right now, we're all say saving at home working. So you need the content, go for it. And thank you so much for your support, guys. Uh, I hope that you continue doing the same in 2021 for me. Yeah, all I know, guys, fans is like I am a fan. I got eight by ten. I'm in her, her patron and not the patron drinking, but the patron ain't eh, on. I'm I'm also a member, and like they say, Latinas do it better. So that's the reason why I'm there. But oh, yeah. Ms. Latina, I want to say thank you so much for your time. I love your work. I can't wait to see what 2021 brings to you, and hopefully in 2021. We could meet somewhere in between one of those shows and just watch wrestling and hang out and drink some tea with the fingers it's sticking up. Maybe we'll spike it with some cognac. <laughs> we will a little cognac and a little bubbly. So, guys, thank you so much. Thank you for Miss San Letena for her time. Thank you. Love her. We love her, everything that she does. Like, we want to wish her everything. A Merry Christmas to you. Happy New Year's. So, fans, thank you so much for tuning in. And we will see you again soon. Don't forget to watch us at www.urbanwrestlingnetwork.com. We have more content coming up. And especially this beautiful interview with this beautiful up-and-comer on the speaking gift a gab part. So thank you for watching and have yourself a nice day.